So going back, looking at ratios and um, kind of understanding what a ratio is and how to create it. So you have these students at Nielsen Middle School. How many students are there total? 200. Yeah. 200. Not 200. Yeah. There's 150. So you might want to be checking that because it says right there, of the 150 oh. students. So that is 150. We call this in ratio terms, this would be the whole. So what are the, what are the parts that make the whole? What's one of them, Otis? Yeah, like what are the what so if this is 150 kids, 100 kids and what are what do they believe in? Um, that they want an athletic event. So they want an athletic event. Good. And Jayla, what's the other part? Um, the 50 people for the concert. And they want a concert as opposed to an athletic event. So <clears throat> there's 150 kids in the school total. That's our whole and then these are our parts. So it says decide if each statement below accurately reports the results of Nelson Middle School survey. Because some of these aren't correct. I asked you to make sure that you state how you know it's incorrect if it is false. Oh. If you think it's false. So let's talk about number one. And so at, Nelson, uh, at Nielsen Middle School, one-third of the students prefer a concert to an athletic event. True or false? Eli? I said true because 50 is one-third. So you're saying that this comparison that they're making here is a 50 over 150. Is that, is this ratio... This is concert people to the total population. Is this a part to whole or a part to part comparison? Part to whole. Because it's comparing it to the whole group. And it literally says, you know, one third of the students prefer a concert. Well, 50 prefer a concert out of 150. If I reduce this, what do I get? One third. So that is a, a, a true statement. One third would prefer a concert. So if one third prefers a concert, what else do we know? Schmitty? Two thirds prefers an athletic event. You're going to want to remember that for later on. Students prefer an athletic event to a concert by a ratio of two to one. Are they asking for us to do another part to whole comparison or a part to part comparison? How do you know it's a part to part? Okay, it's not asking for the whole student body. Uh, it's asking us to, it's saying that an athletic event to a concert. Athletic event to a concert. And when Dylan hears that, it's literally this. It's athletic event to a concert. So you have athletic event to a concert. Athletic, now I can plug in the numbers. 100 over 50. Is this a 2 to 1 ratio? You say yes. Why? Because 50 or 100 is 3 times the day. Yeah. 50 goes in there two times. 50 goes into 50 how many times? There's your two, two, one. You notice how that, that division symbol, we can read it certain ways, and this way we can actually read it as if it's a, a two. Um, the ratio of students who prefer a concert to the students who prefer an athletic event is one to two. Talk to your partner. <laughs> You could have written just a little bit bigger, but you know. That's pretty small, buddy. So I was listening to Cam talk. Cam's like, this is 
the exact same thing except it's the reciprocal. Because instead of athletic to concert, they're saying concert to athletic. And so I put my numbers in, I get 50 over 100, and I know that that is a 1 to 2 ratio again. Part to part, not a part to whole. Comparing the parts to each other. Um, the number of students who prefer an athletic event is 50 more than the number who prefer a concert. Ashton, what do you think? I said false. How many kids prefer a concert? Oh, uh, 50. 50? How many kids prefer an athletic event? 150. No, 100, sorry. 100. So here's my athletic event. Here's my concert. So the number of students who prefer an athletic event is 50 more than the number who prefer a concert. So it is true. Because I'm going to go 100 minus 50. This is another way to compare a part-to-part -part comparison. You can say how many more than the other group. These are all ways, guys, for us to kind of like strategize about how to share a ratio. Number five. Go ahead and talk to your partner about that one. Go. Um, okay, Let me see how small I can write. Yes. Jayla, number of students who prefer an athletic event is two times the number who prefer a concert. Um, yeah, I thought that would have been true. Why? Um, it says it's two times. Two times more likely. Mm -hmm. um, I, wouldn't, I don't know really how to explain it that well. I, I would just think it's true. Well, we have 100 who prefer an athletic event, right? Mm -hmm. We have 50 who prefer a concert. We know that that's a 2 to 1 ratio. A two to one ratio means that it's two times more likely for them to choose that. So what does that two times mean? Let's say I had eight kids. Okay, out of those eight kids, how many are going to choose a concert? So there we go. Now you're thinking. I have eight kids. How many are going to choose an, an athletic event and how many are going to choose a concert? Yeah. Yeah. Because that would be four and four, right? Wait. Six. He says six and two. Think about what, they, what he said there. Six and two does equal... Eight, but that's a three to one ratio. So, so if you have eight kids, about how many? It'd be round six, right? You because you can't have five and three, could you? Because that's not that's not a fifty percent increase either, right? So what about nine? If it was nine kids. A two to one ratio with nine kids. Oh. You would have six and three. three. That would be a two to one ratio. An exact two to one ratio. Okay, last one. Talk to your partner about this one. Go. Oh, he said false. I like it. Why? Because 50 isn't half of 150. Yeah, 50. Well, okay, so. That's a good way to explain it. No, keep going. Um, yeah, 50 is not 50% of 150. Because that means it'd be even on both sides. So Peyton was saying, Peyton said 50% um, of students. So if you have 150, 50% would be what? 75 so it has to be false because we know there's not 75 students that prefer a concert. There's only 50. Um, oh, 
shoot, I was going to say something else that you said that I really liked and I forgot what it was. Oh, is this a part-to-part or part-to-whole comparison? Uh, part-to-part. Think about it. Why is it a part-to-whole, Ashton? Um, because it's comparing that 50% from the, everybody that has. From everyone. It's saying, is it half for everybody? So that's a part to hold. And we know that if I was to break up my concert, this ratio doesn't make a three to four ratio, or I mean a, a one half ratio. It makes it a whoops, makes a one third ratio, <clears throat> not a half. Okay. Um, ideas around this is that. I want you to understand that ratio strategies, all of these are different strategies to show a ratio. You have these comparisons that are subtraction. You have comparisons that are in percents. You have comparisons that are two to one, four times more likely, right? I mean, these are ways that you can share ratios. And you need to understand what, why you would choose each one. And, you know, some of these you hear about, like, like I was saying yesterday with Verizon, they say, you know, it's like three, three to one people prefer Verizon over the leading competitors, right? So that's what we're going to be working on today is understanding these, but we're trying to figure out which drink is the most orangey. Orange. So orangey, um, or these drinks, I should say come from what we call concentrates. Do you guys know what a concentrate is? Yep. Yes. You can buy concentrates in powdered form. You can buy concentrates in um, frozen form. You know when you go to, like you can go to Walmart or Safeway or wherever and you can buy like a, a frozen, like Welch's. Grape. Grape, yeah. Everyone loves the grape because it has like a gazillion grams of sugar. So if I take that frozen, I thought I pour it into a, a canister, and then I take and I put water in to make the juice. Oh. The can of like concentrate is what makes it really grapey. Well, they're doing orange, and so you're trying to find what's the most orangey. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like those uh, when you go to like the circus or baseball games, you can buy the frozen um, shaved ice. yeah shaved ice. Or like the ice. It's like that. It's like it's like a shaved ice with just like loads of flavor. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's basically flavor, and then you add water. So that's what we're going to be looking at today is trying to figure out which is the most orangey. Um, check your email. Okay, all the grades are in, and our retakes will happen Thursday morning. Make sure, guys, on retakes, I've already gone over all the kids that needed to go over this, but now you've got to do this. Now, remember, if you, if you didn't do well on it and you didn't pass, you have to do this. So you can either take this and do this at home, fill this in, and bring it in, or you're going to be spending time during class time. Uh, sorry, not class time, school time doing it. Okay. Yeah. No. If if you get below a C, you can opt to retake it. Anyone can retake it. But if you fail, you must retake it. What's a failing grade? Below a sixty. <laughs> you could do better. All right. Um, but that's going to happen on Thursday. So my first group of retakes is going to be on Thursday. Well, actually tomorrow morning. Some kids are coming in. All right, um, grab your homework. Yep, you just stand. You just wait. You stand right there. Grab your homework. Okay, um, you've got Austin over here with the micro writing. Okay, you need a microscope. But come over, go compare your answers. I'll be in one of the. I'll be going back and forth. Go check your answers with the two kids that have written theirs up. Home, homework. Oh. Homework. Let's see. Let's go to Austin. I did the warm up. You guys are supposed to do homework. Oh man.
All right, find a partner. Find a partner. Find a partner. Compare homework. Yeah, Hennessy, go with go with Eva. Eva, go with Hennessy. You three. Justin, go with Callie. Shmidi, go with Eva. Oh, you didn't do it. Make sure you do your homework. Get caught up. Get your homework out. Go find someone. No, no. Tomorrow, that's what I want you to do. Okay. It's okay. It's your first time doing it. You'll get used to it. Brayden, work with Eli. Come on, focus. Do I do this every day now? Yep. All week. Addie. Come on, you two. Nah. Okay. And? Mostly. Then figure out what you didn't get right. Go and talk about it. Ashton. Um, so if it's like 78%, would we rather go to 80? Uh-uh. Keep it at 78 for this. That's a really good question, but we'll talk about that. Did you do yours, Taya? No? Okay, come on. All right, well... Then go 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 and work on Eliza. Go work with someone. No, don't work with Taya. She doesn't. She doesn't know how to do it. Go work with the boys right here. Go work on it. Yeah, I didn't. I I You didn't do it. Okay. So get going on. Go work on it. You go find a group. Go work with Schmitty and Eva. Eva, Brayden, go. Schmitty's got to work on his. Get going on it. Yeah. Okay. Good question. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that. All right, your next one. Good job. Well, one more minute, guys. One more minute. Okay, let's come back to our seats. So two really good questions. Okay? Um and then Callie, you and you guys just want to put your homework up there next time. Yeah, it's, a, it's your first time. It's okay. Oh, also, me and Cameron are having another debate. Is it 62.5 or 62? It's, We're going to talk about that. You know what? It's, it's the same thing. Basically. All right. So the question was about rounding. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. So if it's 78, do I round up to 80? Because um, B, it's 78% because it's 700 and 80 over 1,000, this is a part to whole comparison. I can take off the zeros, and now I have 78 over 100, which I know is 0.78, or 78%. Now, in terms of doing the math work, and when it, it says, in a taste says blank percent of people, this is asking for a very specific answer. So it would be 78%. I wouldn't round the percent unless I was like maybe going on uh, 
if I was like advertising or something, I might then say 80% because that's an easier number. But in the terms of the math work here, it doesn't ask for it doesn't ask for like an approximation or close to. It says what percent. So when I when ask for what percent, be more specific there. That would be a 78%, not 80%. The other question, there was a, um, here on C, the correct answer was 38 to 11. So it says, people who preferred cranberry blast outnumbered those who preferred melon splash by a ratio of 38 to 11. Cam said, but can't I just say 4 to 1? Okay, that is a 4 to 1 ratio. Mm -hmm. So... If you go, you can see if this was 40 and that was 10, what's our ratio? Four, Four to one. So that's, <laughs> it's really close, but it's not specific enough. So you can't round? <coughs> Whatever comes well, yeah. Not just, you don't want to round because it's just like convenient. Yeah. Just state it as 38 to 11. Okay, but it is what I like about that. It is almost a four to one ratio. Um, those are the only big questions I had there. Okay, go ahead, get your um, notes out. <coughs> one point two. We are going to start off today by reading page ten, and then you will work with your partner. Um, <coughs> And this goes back to the concentrate issue. So read page 10. And then I want you to answer the two red questions after your reading. What two red questions? They're up there. Oh. Once you finish reading, answer the two red questions. So I have in my notes, we have this part to part ratio that is a proportion. And we know that proportions I can increase or decrease with a scale factor. So here I have two cups of concentrate, which is the where you get all your flavor and all the sugar, with three cups of water. And that that also could equal four cups of concentrate and six cups of water. 
which that could equal six cups of concentrate and nine cups of water. And we know that there's a scale factor that goes between these. So what's the scale factor from here to here? Two. We got a scale factor of two. We've increased the recipe by two. What's the scale factor going from here to here? It's four to six. One and a half. So I have a scale factor times one and a half going from the four to the six. This is one and a half times bigger than that. So what's the scale factor going from here to there? You say three, Jayla? How do you know it's three? Oh, well, if you do three times three, it's six. Okay. Three times three is nine. So we have a scale factor of three going that way. So we have this scale factor. And what's the scale factor going the other way? Uh, the reciprocal. So this would be one over 1.5. This would be one half. This would be one third. Right? So we know that the scale factor going the other way is always the reciprocal. So, can you identify the scale factor? Yes. So here I have my two ingredients. So because of the two ingredients, it's a part to part. So once you look at the part to whole, how do we get, I mean, the two cups of concentrate, but how do you get the five? Where does that come from? Where does the five come from in the part to whole? Didn't it come from how much uh, oh. mixture there, I mean, how much juice there is? Yeah, so how'd you get it? From, from, the, from the last, uh, from the part to part. Yeah, so two cups plus three cups equals five cups. So down here they're showing us the part to whole, how many cups of concentrate versus how many total cups. So this is concentrate to juice. There are five cups of juice. Two of them are concentrate and three of them are water. And so each of these are an example of comparing a part to the whole. And the whole includes the part above as well. And it includes the other part that you don't see, which is the six cups of water. Is there any difference in taste between two cups of concentrate, three cups of water, six cups of concentrate, nine cups of water? Is there any difference in taste? You say no, Austin, why? Um, because really the, it's all the same. Like the um, fractions are all the same. It's just like adding up. So it's just, all it really is, that's a great explanation, it's just more of the initial recipe. That's all it is, is they took that recipe and they doubled it. It doesn't taste any more grapey or orangey or root beery or whatever you want to... But couldn't it because of the factor of human error? So technically it could have like four more grams of sugar. <laughs> Or like I mean, if, if there's human error, yes, but in terms of mathematical proportions and equivalent ratios, this is going to taste the exact same, and that's going to taste the exact same. Is there going to be any difference in taste between this and this? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Mm. Why? Because it's, it's not, they're not adding two cups of concentrate to the five cups of juice, it's saying that there are two cups of concentrate in the five cups of juice. So it's literally this, but it's just showing you a part to whole as, a par as opposed to a part to part. So this tastes the same and that tastes the same. So today you're going to be, um, we're going to flip our paper over and I want you to start on the problem that's on the back. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you can work with your partner. Right side, right side. Okay. Um, Tatiana, I want you to work with uh, Callie and Ashton today.
Just work on the side. Ashton, make room. Okay, so Cam, you're going to do C and D, and I'm going to do A and B. And then we show the factor that we get from finding one cup, the, like the original ratio thing. Okay. I like Schmitty's written down ratios. Schmitty has on his paper, he has 2 over 3, 3 over 5, 1 half, and 5 ninths. The scale factors are 1.5 so, and 2. He's written down ratios, and they're all part to part. But now he's getting, what does he have to figure out now? Which one's, which one's the largest percentage of concentrate? Hard to do, just by looking. So you have to think about how am I going to figure that out. What one cup would equal, like one cup, how many would be? So you have two cups, yes. and you need three cups of cold water to make that much juice. You need to find out like how much water you need for having one cup can of juice thing. Right? Does that make sense? You know that, right? This is the one that's most juicy because you see. One cup equals. <laughs> this is two the cups. juiciest because so, this one's the most. Look over here for a sec. Um, so I went around. A couple kids had this, and then I saw someone had this. They're like, that's 66 percent. But they're like, oh man, I don't know what those are. So I got one. How do I how do I figure out what they are? How do I figure out? Yeah? 3 of 5 can be converted to 6 of 10. So you could add the zeros and it would be 60 over 100. So it could be 60%. Okay. And I want to show you that if I just go 3 over 5, I put 5 on the outside, 3 top dog goes in the dog house. So it's 0.6. And what's 0.6? 60%. So I can do it that way. Five nines, I could do the same thing. So I put nine on the outside, five inside, nine goes in there how many times? Five. Five. Nine is 45, and what do I get? Another five. So it's going to be 55 point, or it's going to be 55. So now that you know that, are you able to figure out which one's the most orangey? Yes. Mix A. Yeah. Which one would it be? I told you. A. Mix A. The other way, guys, that you could do this is equivalent fractions. You guys know how to compare? Let's say I wasn't sure about these two. Look up here, two-thirds and three-fifths. I don't know which one's bigger. So in order to compare them, I have to make a common Denominator. So, three fifths. Ashton said 15. That goes into that. Five goes into 15. Three. Three times that is nine. So the this these are equal. Nine fifteenths is three fifths. Exact same thing. So then I bring 15 over here. That goes in there five times. Five times that is two. 
These are equal. Now that I have a common denominator, I can see which one's bigger. 10 fifteenths by 1 fifteenth. This is 1 fifteenth bigger than that. So you can do it the common denominator way too. Once you're done with one and two, you can move on to what's on the board. Where on the
Hey, go ahead. Um, let's just take a look here at, at B1 here. Isabel, what's Isabel comparing? She's comparing the... Yeah, the mix Say it again. Mix B. Okay, mix B. And look at B. It's five cups of water to... Nine cups, uh, five cups of concentrate to nine cups, nine cups of water. So is this the correct ratio for that? Okay. She says five ninths of mix B is concentrate. What about Doug? Doug wrote five fourteenths for mix B. Is that wrong or is it right? It's right five of the fourteen cups. Aha. So we're talking about a part to part here. And, and Doug is looking at a part two whole. This is concentrate to juice. This is concentrate to water. The 14 has the nine cups of water and the five cups of concentrate. So both right they are both right. This is a part to whole, and that is a part to part. And that should be part of your explanation about why they're both right. Just like Eliza said, this is looking at the total, the juice. Okay, once you've um, finished getting that down, get down B1. We are going to put that away and we're going to go to the exit ticket because it takes a little bit of time. We could me. We did A, the warm up had six problems. Yeah, that was the majority of them. Then we did. Yeah, that's a warm up. <laughs> oh my God. You're working just as hard. The warm up doesn't count. Sometimes the warm ups are short and that allows us to get to more work. Sometimes the warm ups take a little bit longer. I wanted to go over that warm up today. Um, okay. Homework is page five. It's page five. Problem five on page 20. Write that in your planner. Problem five, page 20. I don't have Do we know how many We were looking, yeah, we do in a sec. We were looking at um, ratio strategies right off the very beginning. We looked at ratio strategies. And we had to determine which mix is the most orangey by looking at those ratio strategies. One ratio strategy is, if you look over here, is to take the ratio and convert it to a percent. The other ratio strategy is to make equivalent ratios and to see which one's bigger. They both get you the same answer or to the same outcome. So here you have a town debating whether to put curbs um, along the streets. You're only going to do A and B today. So um, town residents who support putting in curbs to those who oppose is two to five. Is this a part to part or a part to whole? 
part to part. So it says, what fraction of residents oppose putting in curbs? So my initial ratio is what? Two to five. Two to five. So I got two. Oh. Ooh, that's so my part to part ratio is two to five. What fraction of residents oppose? Uh, seven over one. I like what you're doing. It would be two seven. Well, this is this is um support and this is oppose why do you say five over seven because five out of all the people we want it. so we know five don't want it right out of oh, how, out of how many seven. out of seven oh. there's seven total so they're opposed <laughs> And this is your total. They're still adding. So five sevenths would be your fraction, your ratio. Okay. What would that be as a percent? How do I do that? How do I figure out how many, what percent oppose? Ashton? Yep. So I go seven. Five in the doghouse, because the top dog always gets the doghouse. So that's 0. 0.7, that'd be 49. And that would be 1, 7, 3, then it would be 2, 28. So we can go just that far. If I was rounding, this would stay as 71. So that equals 71% oppose getting curbs. Man, I never knew curbs were... Such a hot topic. So what about this? What about B? Talk to your partner about that. How do how do I figure this out? If there's 210 people total in the town, 210 were surveyed. How many wanted to put in curbs? Talk to your partner. <laughs> Just trying to figure out how to do what. How many people are in the town? 210. Yeah, small town. Um, what is the fraction of people that want that want the curbs? Yeah. But what's the fraction? Two over seven. So here's my fraction that want. If I take this, how would I use this with that? Dylan. Not divide. Multiply. Multiply. Because this is a, it's a decimal, right? This, if, if I was to convert, it would be a decimal. So I'm going to take two sevenths and multiply it by two ten. And I'm going to get a larger number or a smaller number? Larger, smaller. Which one is it? Larger or smaller? Smaller. Why? Why is it going to be smaller, Justin? Yeah, this is a decimal. Anytime I take a decimal and multiply it, I get a smaller number. Anytime it's bigger than one and I multiply it, I get a bigger number. So I go 210 times 2 sevenths. And 210 times 2 is 400 and 
20 divided by 7. How many times does 7 go into 42? And then 7 goes into 0? So how many people, if the town is 210, how many people want curbs? 60. Now, if you're one of those 60 people, you better hope that the non-curb people don't know who you are because they, they outnumber you. And they will graffiti your house. That looks like a big town. Hope you feel better. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Please put your chairs in. Hasta la vista. That's my... What? What are you confused about?